This is my 5,000 watt solar inverter. Um, and today I'm going to make an improvement to it. It's not going to change it in any way. Let me show you what I'm up to. Well, this is the inverter's underside. And as you can see, it's got this massive heat sink under here. This inverter uses passive cooling. It doesn't have a fan in it. And I wanted that because if you put a fan in there and the fan quits moving, what happens? Well, this thing overheats, it quits, and then you have to take it off the wall and take it into the uh, dealer to have the fan replaced. If you just have convective cooling, that's better because there's no fan to wear out. And what I want to do is I want to add a fan down here out of the way of the, of the uh, uh, normal draft just to create a little subtle breeze up the backside because as electronics uh, run cooler, they run longer, which is a good thing. So I just want something that's going to let a little breath of air up the backside and keep it cooler. I've uh, already got, you can see some yellow wires over here, and that runs to a different set of solar panels. So what's going to happen is when the sun comes up, those wires will pow power a set of fans across here and uh, blow air up the backside of here. And if these fans go bad, there's no problem. I just replace them. And this thing will keep running because it was made to run without fans. But again, I'm just going to try to prolong the life a little bit. Let me show you what I got. My plan is to mount a fan bar underneath the inverter like this to kick off the to kick off the convection and to keep it running during the day. So this bar will have three little fans mounted across there like that. And we can take a look at that. It's just a two inch pie fan, nothing special about it. And the bar will be mounted out of the way again, and it's relatively low profile, only a couple inches. So there it is. It will be powered by these, uh, these wires come from another solar panel. And when the sun comes up, this will start running. And it will keep that cooler during the day. Let's go over the components quickly. The main component, as you can see, is this aluminum tube, part of a door frame. There's three holes on top, and each one of those holes is for a fan, like this. There are screw holes in the corners to mount the fans, and then there's one of these big holes to run the wires down. I keep flip-flopping on whether I'm going to mount the fans inside or, or not. Uh, if I do mount them on the inside, then I can never go up to a bigger size fan, but okay, we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, so these are uh, for the fans and then three sets of those, one, two, three. These holes on this side, these are my screwdriver holes, and that what will happen is the screws will come out through here into wall anchors and this way I can tighten them. With a screwdriver on this side, let's see, now let's go to the bottom side. This is the bottom side, and as you can see I've got the fuse holder in here. So the electrical wires come in here. Uh, go to the fuse holder. These two sets, uh, these pairs of wires, three pair of, of holes, sorry, are for these quick releases like this. And I will either screw or pop rivet them down inside there. And they are color coded so that one can change out a fan quickly just pop them open, plug the wires in there, snap them closed, and then screw the fan back down and done. So it'll make uh, changing out fans very quick and easy. And then the last thing on the bottom, going back to the bottom, is the 12 volt regulator. And I'm not going to have electricity passing into the frame here. It's going to be isolated. So I've got this thing. This is an electrical insulator, but a thermal conductor and then the 12 volt regulator goes on top and through those like that and it will all be screwed down with some thermal heat sink compound um, and yeah that'll be it so now my next step is I need to build the wiring harness that goes inside here because I really can't I can't solder it in place I'm gonna have to build a wiring harness 
set everything up, slide it in there, and then uh, put these screws or rivets, whatever, in here like that. Okay, so on to the next step. These little fans are made to run on about 12 volts, and inside they have a little circuit board. They're not just a straight motor, they have a little circuit board in there, and I need to make sure that that circuit board will not be affected by low voltage. So, yeah, you know, if this was just a straight motor, low voltage may not hurt it, like with the pumps I have, the water pumps I use on solar. So I need to ensure that low voltage is not a problem, because if it is, I need to do something with the circuit in order to ensure that, you know, that it gets above a certain voltage before the fans are supplied. Um, and so right now I've got it about 2.4 volts. If I raise it up a bit, it'll start turning. Um, this is, yeah, let's see. There it goes. Um, yeah, so I want to make sure that uh, it doesn't like heat up at certain voltages or or uh, cause problems. So 2.4 is about the minimum where it will uh, it won't start turning by itself and I'm going to do it at about one volt so one volt 2.4 uh, like three point some volts where it just barely starts turning because I want to make sure this thing doesn't overheat burn out catch fire or something like that so right now this is my experiment as you can see I'm running it in a metal can so it doesn't set the house on fire and just let it sit here for hours this is the wiring harness as it's going to go into our project box. This is the right side set of contacts, left side set of contacts, center contacts. This will go to the output of our, of our uh, voltage regulator. And this of course will go to the ground. This is the wiring harness laid in place. It's not nailed down yet. Uh, but just kind of getting a rough idea. Yes, everything fits in there. There's one, two, three. That one goes in there. Uh, this little wiring harness will go in here. It will come from the solar. And the split wire right here is goes through the fuse. And the other wire, of course, is the negative. Um, yeah, so that's where we are right now. Need to solder all this into place and then uh, getting close to being done. Well, here we are. Everything is soldered, screwed in place. Uh, it was a trick soldering back inside there. It was uh, really difficult without burning up all the wires and everything. But it, everything is in there mounted and theoretically ready to go. Next will be to mount the fans, of course. Here we are with the fans installed, and as promised, I changed my mind and put them inside. It'll make it harder to maintain, but frankly, I like the looks. I know that's silly, but um, just like the look of it better. And yeah, it's all there. Okay, so time to hook it up to a power supply and do a smoke test on it. Okay, smoke test in three, two, one. And nothing. Cranking it up, 8 volts comes on, there's 12 volts, heat, uh, voltage regulator, heat sink, mm, very cool, no problem not heating up, all fans are running. Power supply is maxed out. Make sure voltage regulator is still staying very cool. The air circulating through the aluminum, of course, will, will help keep that cool. And yeah, I'll do a burn in for a while and make sure nothing strange happens over time, but uh, yeah, passes the smoke test. Next thing is to go hook it up to the solar panels and mount it on the wall. Okay, got it mounted, just two wall anchors, and 
put a plug on it to make sure I didn't connect it the wrong way. Here's our incoming 12 volts from our solar panels. And here we go. Now the first thing I noticed is a little bit loud. may have to come up with something on why it's a little loud. But, um, getting the air up here and checking on top of the inverter. Yeah, it's doing what it should. Okay. Well, I'll run it for a while and uh, make sure it's going to last. And that should do it. Okay, so the next step is test it for a week or so. It's been operating about a week now and I've got a couple improvements. Let me, uh, let me show you the main one. So this is a uh, design defect. You can hear it's rather loud. And my guess is what's happening is the uh, center fan is fighting for air with the two outer fans because there's no inlet specifically for this. And so what's happening is the air is really thrashing, being thrashed by this center fan. I could just disconnect it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole either here or on the bottom to let air in. And my guess is that'll quiet it right down. Okay, so that's uh, one improvement to make. The other improvement I was considering making was to add a couple supercapacitors maybe to help smooth out transition like when a small cloud passes, bird goes over, something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, have to give that a try and see if it actually improves anything, but that's the second improvement. I drilled a big hole in the bottom, so we'll see if that quiets the noise. Another improvement I found was I put some shrink wrap around here because I was worried that over time it would rub on this edge, the wire would rub on the edge. I have to do a video on how to remove the pins from one of these Molex like plugs. Um, but for right now, there's uh, I can't figure out any great way to put in a capacitor, so we'll go remount it. We'll listen for the noise and see if it's quieter. Okay? Well, here we are with our improvement. This uh, hole in the bottom increased our uh, total intake area to something more reasonable. I'm not an audio engineer, but I'd say it's about half volume. And then you can see over there our uh, addition of the yellow shrink wrap to protect the wire. And no space in there for the uh, super capacitors. I'll have to do that on version 2. Okay, well that was it for today. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your DIY solar projects. <laughs>